All right, all right. It is an official. We are doing live on lockdown episode 35. I am Baratunde Thurston, your host with the most. And I want to do a special welcome to Montre 75. I didn't see your name last week. I wasn't even sure if it counted as a show without Montre. So let's do this. We're jumping in quicker this time because we have less time to dilly dally and uh, I'm going to preserve this later, assuming IG doesn't mess with me. All right. Uh, as I do at the top, let me see who's in the room. Let me see what questions are coming in. Uh, this is a show built with you. I will riff with you. I have a few things that I want to share with you, uh, but you can determine some of that too. So hit that big question mark sticker at the bottom to add something to the pile. In the meantime, let me scroll back and see who's up here in the room. All right, all right. Kevin Holding. That's an interesting name because that makes me think of drugs. Uh, Montre's here. Good. Before Vegan Was Cool is here. Asking me how my week was. Yo, this week, um, very intense. A lot going on. You know, you have one of those weeks and you're like, what did I do this week? Let me look back at my calendar and see. Computer, how was my week? <laughs> So yeah, I've been uh, heavy in production on the How to Citizen podcast slash video show. We're doing both. We have uh, taped the first three episodes. I still love how we use the word taped, even though there is there is no tape involved. We have filed the first three episodes, a digital file version of them. You're going to love this. If you love me here, you're going to love this even more. And what's very exciting is that we make the show with a live studio in Zoom audience. And uh, that's that's becoming something smoother. It's like what I've been doing with the Sunday shows with Live on Lockdown. But it's, uh, it's for a much bigger thing. The project of reclaiming our power in society, which feels a wee tad important. I don't know about you, but I've been feeling kind of powerless and I'm sick of it. So let's do something different. Um, and if you're new to this whole thing, briefly, hi, I'm Baratunde. I'm coming to you live from Northeast Los Angeles, the Highland Park neighborhood area formerly uh, run and operated by the Tongva people. I should acknowledge I haven't done that so much recently, but let me try doing that. And it is Thursday, the 6th of August, 2020. This is episode 35 of a show that I made to provide information, a bit of community, sharing my perspective on all things COVID and related. And it became a bit of a chronicle of the revolution that is coinciding with the COVID and the Rona. And uh, I take questions and topic suggestions from you. So hit that question mark at the bottom and that will help me determine what I talk about. So in answer to your question before vegan was cool, which is still one of my favorite usernames of the show of all time, how has my week been? Uh, it's been good. It's been good. I've, uh, I had one of those dreams last night. I, I remember on an episode many weeks, or was it years ago, where I shared with you I had a dream, and in that dream I slept. <laughs> that happened again last night. But I kind of manifested it, because as I, I was so tired yesterday, I, I spoke remotely yesterday to a big old law firm, uh, and, uh, and another large gathering and I had to do, and we taped the show and that's a lot. And in the previous version of the world, I couldn't physically do that. You know, I would, I would fly to some place and commit a climate crime in the process. And then I would talk to a big group of people in a super spreading sort of event before we had this pandemic and I would give a lot and then I would like pass out and sleep and Netflix and chill and have a day or two to get back home and plan the next thing. And now I've kind of compressed sort of a week's worth of those experiences into a day. So yesterday was a day um, and it was, it was good, but I, it left me floored. And so I went to bed with the intention of like, I need so much sleep. I want to sleep in my sleep. And then I had this dream and in my dream, I got to sleep. But it was very special because in my dream, like we were living with the Rona and the parks were closed, but I so desperately needed sleep so much. I got a special 
like uh, edict, uh, an executive order from the president to designate a park just for me to sleep in. It was called Thurston Farms. <laughs> this is a true story. It's a true story. A real dream I had last night. And this, it was this president. I'm not even trying to be vague about it. It was this whack president who was like, this man needs to sleep. <laughs> let's, let's give him a park. And I brought out like some comforters and some sleeping bags. And I like fluffed them up and softened the ground a little bit. And I was like, hmm, I'm so excited to sleep <laughs> inside of my sleep. So I feel rested uh, because I rested during my rest. And, uh, and that was great. And yeah, I've been, I've been doing my daily walks. Um, I haven't been as intense on the workouts this week because I'm in production and I just didn't have the time. But I've been mobile every day at least, doing my laps, interacting with uh, the little neighbor, neighbor kids. This one little neighbor girl, she's amazing. I think I shared a story about her last week. Got an update from her. She saw me walking today. She's like, Baratunde! I was like, that just warms my heart so much. It's really wonderful. And she's got her like um, handkerchief mask. And I was like, oh, you got your handkerchief mask. She's like, it's called a bandana. Like she's the fact checker of the neighborhood. And I was like, all right, it's cool, cool, cool. And she's like, are those new shoes, Baratunde? <laughs> Which, yes, I wear new shoes. But the fact that she noticed, like she sees me, y'all. I feel like a true member of my community when the little neighbor girl recognizes my new shoes. So very exciting. Thank you for asking uh, how my week was before vegan was cool. Uh, Mishak, what you drinking? Thank you for asking. I have a little glass of something, something here. It's brown and free. Uh, it is bullet bourbon, uh, 1.5 ounce, half ounce of uh, old stout rye and a 1.5 ounce of orange vermouth from Italy with citrus bitters and a little brown sugar. Brown sugar, baby. Uh, and then I swirl it all around. I got three ice cubes up in there with orange peel. And despite my protestations on Paul Rykoff's Angry Americans podcast, I put a little slice of orange in there. I did. Because the Rona, whatever. I break my own rules. I set rules. I break them. Whatever. Give us free. So here we are. And uh, Duchess Hell is here. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you for being with us. Jordan Cooper, NYC. I know you. Hello. Uh, and the username of the night goes to... Do, 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 do. Boom shakalaka, here comes the chief raka. I'm stalling, I'm stalling because I'm choosing the winner. Uh, let's see. Oh, you know what? Okay, I take flattery as a good way to enhance the vote. Mama Graves, Mama Graves. And honestly, I liked the name before I saw what you said, but I, in this case, I like the username that communicates a whole thing. And so Mama Graves, that's just to me, like, I'll tell you what I hear with Mama Graves. I'm like, Mama Graves got a story. Mama Graves has raised some of these kids in this crazy world. Everybody on the block is like, yo, that's Mama Graves. Don't mess with her. Even a little girl on my block knows Mama Graves. Like, Mama Graves, you have new shoes. Mama Graves got wisdom. So uh, thank you, Mama Graves, for joining us tonight. And thank you for the compliment. Yes, I spoke to uh, the good people at Target yesterday, Target. My apologies uh, for that. So, all right. I am scrolling through, catching up on who's here. It's very good to see uh, all you. Got a lot of, got a lot of people from the Target. Great. Uh, so, so for those who were there, and let me, let me explain. For those who weren't there, it's actually more valuable. But, you know, I used to do these talks in a physical space, and I would spend a lot of time on the slides. You know, I'm sorry. I'm back. I got an alert. <laughs> I got an alert from the Hollywood Reporter that the president is forcing the sale of TikTok. And I just thought, let me share that with you. Breaking news, our crazy president's doing a crazy thing. But back to me, uh, something a bit more stable than our commander in chief. Um, I, I've been used to going to places physically and having a stage and slideshows and choosing my fonts carefully. And now that we're in this Zoom universe, this Zoomiverse, 
I've just abandoned the slides and I just basically I've been doing live on lockdown for people who bring me to their schools and their organizations and their companies and just telling it the way I see it and trying to be as real as possible. And so for those of you showing up from Tarjay, you should know, like I left it all on the field. Uh, if, if you join it from Deckard, same thing. Uh, and if you're interested in having me come and talk to your group of humans, hit up my website, baratunde.com. We can work something out. If you're a big old company with a lot of money, I'm going to take your money. But, you know, if, if you are an organization or an educational institution or whatever, we can do different things. Uh, and it's not always about money. So thank you for, for sticking around, uh, following my instructions to find me on IG. Clearly you did that. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's good to. And then we got some Jack and Jill people in the house. QK, I see you. I, <laughs> my fiance is out in the front yard hanging out with a friend, socially distanced on the other side of the yard. And uh, the friend was like, yo, so how was your day been like? How you doing? I was like, but they let me talk to like 300 teenagers just now. <laughs> so much love to my Jack and Jill people, uh, the black teenagers of the universe. Uh, Y'all like little Wakanda Island is, is very, it's very special. It's a special and awkward and exhausting and exhilarating time that we are in. I'm here in LA and I got a news alert that my mayor is gonna cut off the electricity and gas of people throwing big house parties. And I was like, is that, is that legal? Like, I wanna fight the virus with the best of them and the rest of them, but even I was like, yo, civil liberties, yo, what about, what about that? Like, I'm not trying to start a rally with an AR-15 over it, but do we have better targets to pick than the house party people? And if you're throwing big unfiltered house parties, like stop that but cutting off people's electricity and gas. I know I have a sensitivity to it. There's a lot of people in this country who don't have means and it's uh, forcing them into a more desperate, barbaric state to do that to them. But if, I mean, I guess if you've got a big old mansion and you're just throwing a wild and out party, you could probably, you probably have a Jenny as well. You probably have a generator too. So maybe you're good. Um, anyway, here we go. Uh, what I wanted to share with you is I got a COVID test today. Yes, I went to a city testing facility uh, because I ended up in what I thought was going to be a lunch at a friend's house who had a negative test and we had negative tests, but there was mad other people. And I was like, I feel like we might have been overexposed. Let me get this test on. And testing is a funny thing because, you know, there are... Um, there's not very many false positives, but there's a lot of false negatives in the testing universe. And there's so many types of tests. And there's like tests that they take their sweet time getting your results back to you, like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days, which is not even useful. And then you got like the, the the rapid testing, which is, you know, five minutes later, you know, which is limited to very wealthy, like millionaires and billionaires in the United States or the people of Senegal. Like, I still don't understand <laughs> how we're such, we are a failed state, y'all. Like, real talk. We are not, we are not number one. We are number one at not being number one. That's what's up with America right now. Because so many other places have figured this out and we are just like, what should we do? I guess we should maybe figure out some testing or, Get some masks or I don't know, or maybe just not do anything. Let's uh, throw a party, open up the bars. I don't know. Like, is it even real? We're having this stupid ass argument. So I decided, let me go through the city. Let me, I'm paying these taxes. Let me go to uh, the lacity.org. And honestly, I, I, uh, we have a, a text messaging group in our neighborhood we built on WhatsApp. So we have this Northeast LA texting group. And so I asked the group, like, where can we get these rapid tests? And folks were like, Dodger Stadium. And I was excited because I'd never been to Dodger Stadium. I, I went one time, sort of, when I was in a Uber pool and I got dragged to Dodger Stadium because somebody was trying to go to like a concert or a game. And so I sort of saw the outskirts. And then I, but I've never gone to any kind of sporting event because I don't really mess with baseball. And I think that's what happens at Dodger Stadium. And that's a super slow, awkward sport that I'm not very excited about. So long story long, I, uh, I signed up this morning and they had a testing slot. 
And I drove over there because you know, I have a car now. My fellow New Yorkers, I'm sorry I have sinned. Forgive me, New York, for I have sinned. I have a motor vehicle. And I whipped over there in like 15 minutes. And it was just this like caravan of waiting. And it, but it was like, it was cool. It was, maybe took me 45 minutes to get through the whole process. And uh, they have these big old screens. And they're like, tune in to 1620 AM to get the audio associated with the video is going to tell you how to do this test. Now, mind you, I had already done the pre, I did the homework ahead of time. I watched a video of like how you're supposed to do the test. You take this swab, you stick it in your mouth, rub a actually you cough first, you know, to generate whatever might be in your lungs. Swab in the left, swab to the right, swab to the top, swab to the bottom, get the gum line, gum lines, drum line, drum line. And then you don't let that touch anything else. And you put it in a little joint, you put it in a little vial with the, Stabilizing liquid, you seal the cap, shake it like a Polaroid picture, and drop it in a Ziploc bag. Um, and it was a it was a pretty smooth process, but I had a challenge because I did not. I have a very modern vehicle. Um, I, I refused getting a car for a very long time because of the aforementioned New Yorkness within. And so when we got out here, I was like, I'm not getting a combustion engine vehicle because that's a sin. So I was like, electric, electric. And I went through this whole rigmarole. I, bet, I, I built a Google spreadsheet. I did all the research. I'm up on the YouTubes and Reddits, and I'm looking at the miles per gallon and the EMPGs and the Model 3. So I'm leasing this Model 3. And it's the most futuristic, amazing spaceship of a car trapped on Earth. And today I found out it does not have AM radio. <laughs> it does not have AM radio. And so I was like, yo, I can't tune in to the 1620 AM because my car is, is in the future where there's no, <laughs> I'm inside this bubble of a car. I do not live in the present. I live in the future where there's no AM. So then I'm, we're moving very slow or mostly not moving. So I'm like on my iPhone, I'm like AM radio app. How does that work? Mind you, I have like those solar powered Eton survival radios, not in the car. And that definitely picks up the AM and the ultra wide and the short, short, short wave radio. So I'm here like in the present, but trapped in the future because a video is about to play that I'm not going to be able to hear because my car is too dope. <laughs> so I download two different apps. I got the tune in radio. None of them get 1620 AM at this hyper local situation. And then finally there's a second giant led screen. And it's basically like, for you trifling people who are too good for the rest of us, <laughs> install the Mix Halo app, which I guess is like an app that's used in arenas for sporting events. Again, I don't go to arenas very often or sporting events very often. And so I install this app and jump on this busted Wi-Fi and they keep trying to give me to accept notifications. Like a side note, if you're throwing an app out there, Stop with the trying to get the notifications permission. Like, no, the answer is no. I, this is a limited time thing that I need. I don't want you just interrupting my life. So I deny repeatedly the begging, the thirstiness for permission to notify me. Like, what more notification do I need? I suspect that I might've been exposed and I'm in line with hundreds of other people at Dodger Stadium, not for a sporting event. Like this is a, I'm in a dystopic moment right now. You do not get the rights to interrupt me later. So I do some breathing exercises to calm down from that agitated state I just shared with you. And then I uh, tune into the Mix, Mix Halo app. And what do I see but Eric Garcetti, my mayor, hit me up in Espanol. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is good. This is how you learn Spanish. This is how they make you get bilingual. Like you wanna know how to do this test, right? You gotta learn it in Spanish first. So I sat through the Espanol version and it's on a loop. And then I hear him in the English version. And he's so full of the LA love thing. And the, oh, it's just like, it's very, sometimes it makes me feel good. Sometimes it's very annoying. So they teach you all the things that I already watched because I'm a super nerd. And I watched this video before I even boarded Spaceship Tesla to get to the 1980s testing facility with the AM radio situation. But it was a nice refresher. And then you pull up to these container ships. They're like these, a uh, desert sand brown container uh, vehicles, like the same containers that we 
operate drones out of to blow up people in weddings in the in Pakistan. Like it was a a wedding destroying drone operator container ship. But instead of a drone operator, there was a, a lady inside with a facial and a mask, and she had one of those like arm like retractable arm things like from the annoying arcade game that you can never win. And she presented to me, she did the hand signal, roll your window down. So I roll my window down and she hands me the test. Um, Oh, I forgot about the dude that was super irritated with me. There was a dude who was super irritated with me because the first time you roll up, they say you got to show your confirmation number. Oh, look at this. Look at this in my hair. That is a gift. Be free, fuzzy. So they, um, I had the confirmation number. It was like the new TSA. I haven't flown since March. So it was exciting for me to like have to present credentials with my phone. It was basically like a clear program or whatever. So I showed the thing and then he has a sign that says, show me your confirmation number and your first name. And I was like, well, I have the confirmation number. It's on this on the screen. I took a snapshot with the photo app from the website. But how do I show him my name? And I showed him the email address. My email is, everybody knows my email is just baratunde at baratunde.com. Everybody knows. He didn't know because he's not one of you. But it's right there on the screen. So I point to the email address. And I'm like, just the first, I was like, how do you communicate someone through the closed glass? I was like, the first name, right? He's like, it's too small. I can't read that. And I'm like, nobody told me this. Like, I didn't know I needed to custom build a graphic before I showed up with 40 point font size. Like there was nothing in the pre-video, in the confirmation email that said, you're going to have to communicate your first name. And so he was super annoyed with me. Like, I'm like, I'm annoyed with you. I don't, I did my homework. I'm a good student. I'm a good citizen. I, I'm fucking here, man. Like, you know how many people are not here right now? You should be glad that I'm here. And so I'm like, here's, I have, kid you not, I'm like, I know where my name is large in these iOS streets, in the, in the wallet app that you use to show your boarding pass to board a flight. So I opened up my old Apple wallet, which I haven't used since March because I haven't been on a plane since March. And it's just, it's a tragic history of the freedom that I no longer have. Every boarding pass, like Apple doesn't just delete them. I didn't realize this. Every trip I've ever taken is just logged and it's a list of shit I can't do anymore. And so it's just like Delta boarding passes up the wazoo and a few event brights thrown in and Delta, 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 and then one jet blue flight. And so I'm pulling up an old boarding pass to show and he's like, forget it. And he just waves me through like he's like he's doing me a favor, like I offended his grandmother and like I don't even deserve to be in his presence. Like he, he was like a club bouncer who had to let me in despite his judgment because the owner was like, that's my boy. And he's like, fine, you know Derek, you get in. But I never was. So that was the first checkpoint. And then we had the drone container operator offering me the test and then I start my swab I'm like yo 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 10 seconds 10 seconds and then I realized I forgot to cough so I'm like oh shit rewind <coughs> you know I do my but like more serious and then it it evokes an actual coughing fit <laughs> you ever like do a fake cough and then all of a sudden you're really coughing like that was me so I'm <laughs> here I am like locked in my car and I'm legit coughing up a storm to do a good COVID test. So whatever is in me, they got the good stuff because I was, I was coughing up last week, you know, and then I put it in the vial and I squeeze it real tight and I shake it like a Polaroid picture and I drop it in a zip and I seal it. And then they, <laughs> they have you throw it unceremoniously in a blue garbage pail. And then I went about my merry way. So how was your day? <laughs> I like y'all. I like y'all. Um, so <laughs> 20, 24 minutes into this, 
Uh, no, they they uh, hedgetarian ass. They don't stick the thing up your nose anymore. Uh, no, I have had uh, several tests now, and they were all the the nasal tests where they try to tickle your brain with a Q-tip. Um, and you know, I had been warned going into those tests that they were very invasive, that it would feel like a violation. And I don't know if I'm just like super strong and amazing or everybody else is super weak, but that it just didn't bother me. Uh, this was not that. This was a, a swab test in the mouth region, in your mouth hole. So we'll see. We'll see. My previous tests have been negative. Um, and, and I'm hoping this one is also negative because I want to resume my pod with some of our, our good friends, a couple and their baby who I miss. Uh, but we didn't want to risk that. So this is uh, an attempt to be a responsible citizen of the Rona. Yeah. Mishak says, I didn't think the nasal swab was a big deal at all. Me neither. It might depend on the operator too, or just, you know, I also had a procedure a few years back because I had some situation with my, um, nose <laughs> my nasal region and so it might be easier because they had to it's getting real personal on this episode you don't need to know all that point being uh i can handle certain things now because of if i tell you more i'll be violating the national security of wakanda so let's just move forward shall we uh i'm gonna check out some of robin cloud is here hello robin good to see you thank you for showing up i like to Give shout outs to people I know, because uh, that just makes it fun. <laughs> Mishak's up here selling chocolates like a Boy Scout. That's amazing. Uh, all right, going door to door like those kids in the New York City subway slanging chocolates for your basketball league, Mishak, for your basketball league. Okay. Okay. Um, I wanted to talk about the COVID test. Uh, I want to... I read an article this week in the New York Times uh, about Mumbai and a, a slum in Mumbai called Dharavi and, and how this slum called Dharavi, where a slumdog millionaire was based, uh, suppressed the virus. And that, that was meaningful to me because, well, because I've been to that slum. I visited Dharavi many years back. Uh, as I went to India for a friend's wedding and they did us the beautiful favor of showing us all sides of Bombay, Mumbai from the high to the low and everything in between. And so I physically have a, a memory of, of this place. Very, very compact. Like you think New York is dense and then you go to Dharavi and it's like people on people on people. And in between that, there's more people. And so the idea of COVID in a space like that, is terrifying. And yet, <laughs> they have managed to uh, get this thing under control in Dharavi, in a massive slum, in a still developing nation. And here we are in these United States with 50 to 60,000 cases a day, with roughly a thousand people dying every day, deciding we just can't get our ish together. And I'm like, do I have to move to a slum in India for some sound? public health policy. Like, is that where we're at? So shout outs to the people of India, shout outs to the people of Dharavi, shout outs to the people everywhere taking this seriously and treating it with the respect it deserves. That that irked me a little bit. The other thing that's been on my mind and bothering me is, is, is data collection uh, with respect to all this. We, you know, the CDC has been hamstrung and undercut by an administration uh, bent, I think, on not wanting to look bad. And so more of us die than need to. But they had been performing an important function, which is collecting all this information from hospitals until enter our Banana Republic of a White House, which says, no, 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 you want to, Health and Human Services is going to take over this and we're definitely going to botch it. So what you want to do is send all your data to us so we stop updating the American people on the true state of things with respect to hospitalization. And I, I don't like it. I just I just don't like it. I want to acknowledge it. Um, we need 
good information. And without it, it is easier to cover things up. It is easier to reduce the confidence we all have in how our government is responding. Transparency is a hallmark of a functioning democracy. And so when you take that away, you reduce the function of our democracy. I'm so, so irritated about all that. So I wanted to talk about that. Let's see what you want to talk about. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. Before vegan was cool. Has dropped something in into the hat. That interview, you know the one. I suspected that some of you might want to know my opinion of what happened on HBO this week. I, uh, I resented you for it in advance of knowing you might want it. And I hated myself for subjecting myself before I did. But I felt a perverse responsibility to, to myself, to you, to experience this thing that happened this week on HBO. And I had seen some memes flying around and I saw the face of Jonathan Swan, this Axios reporter, as he tried, tried to interview the president of the United States. And I made the mistake of listening to this and partially watching while I was in line for my COVID test today. And so part of my agitation during that test, part of my reflection might have been due to the fact that I was subjected to psyops, uh, to a level of psychological and emotional abuse by our commander in chief as I watched this person, I think, behave in a way that makes the little five-year-old neighbor girl look like she should be the commander in chief. She got more wits about her. She has more command of the language. She can follow a thought more directly. My little five-year-old neighbor girl who noticed my shoes were new than the president of the United States. I, I had to stop it several times. I had to stop because I just couldn't, I didn't, I've never like, what? It hurt. It hurt. And yet I felt like I got to power through. I got to, I got to fin you finish what you start, Baratunde. You, you finish this. You eat all the food on your plate. I felt like it was Brussels sprouts that had been spoiled. That an irresponsible parent was forcing me to eat me being the parent. And so I put that in my mouth and I chewed on this madness. This King Learness, this. Ah. <sighs> so, our president, I say that so reluctantly, had lost his damn mind. And he is so. What I saw was a bully. What I saw was a little boy. What I saw was a broken child. What I saw was a temper tantrum. What I saw is someone so unwilling to face the reality of what he's in that he is clinging desperately to any version of truth that makes him look good. I saw someone who has presided over the deaths of over 150,000 of the people he is charged to protect center himself rather than we the people. I saw somebody desperate to be validated in the midst of an interview focused on his actual duties to protect and serve and to defend us all against enemies, foreign and domestic, including a freaking global pandemic. This dude is arguing over the size of his super spreading crowd in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Arguing with the reporter. What the fuck does it have to do with anything? What are you... I can't with this dude. I am so done. I am so done with this. I'm just, this guy wants to deny everything that makes him look bad. He still thinks this is about how he looks. 
it's a vanity project for him. He's he he spent over a minute insisting and bragging about the record setting ratings he got on Fox. But then when he talked about the number of people who are dying every day, it is what it is, he says. Like some wannabe washed up gangster who just watched a Scorsese film. It is what it is. That doesn't make you fucking cool. It makes you a monster. Uh, every day that goes by that he occupies that office is a day that we face a clear and present danger to our republic and to our lives. Every day. Every day. Every day that goes by that Mitch McConnell doesn't do something about it is a day that he is complicit in the destruction of our country. Every day that goes by that the self-identified Republican doesn't speak out against this the way they demand a Muslim speak out against some random act of terror is the day that they stand against the country they swear they love so much. This is not a game. This is not a joke. This is not about media ratings and hits. People are dead now, y'all. And watching that thing that happened on Axios, which they put fully on YouTube uninterrupted. Thank you, HBO, for that public service so we could all see the madness that attempts to rule over us instead of representing us like a mad king. Freaking <laughs> King Lear Targaryen. That's what I saw. Madness. It's disgusting. So thank you for the topic suggestion. You got me in a certain state, a certain way, a certain thing I'm feeling, but damn. And damn anybody who still cosigns on this. I can't wait. I cannot wait for Lynn manuel Miranda's great-great-grandchildren to go ham on this moment. And... Just do a number on these people who are trying to break us right now. That's going to be a dope musical though, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> I guess it'd be like a hologrammatic, you know, multi-sensory brain implant experience. You know, like, I don't know what would, what would that, what would that musical be like? I mean, would it even be called to me? It'd be like a sensical. Could it be a full sensory, like you would feel the emotions. You know, that's reminding me of Sarah Jones. Check out Sarah Jones's work, y'all. She has, she has this, she is a prophet among us, and she did this show set in the future where you could like experience the emotions of people in the past. Uh, it was great. It was great. Find find out what she's doing right now. She's building some beautiful things. So, yeah, Dinah Dinah Pew. I did I did say that. I did say go ham on this moment. Let's check the bag. Let's see what else y'all have put in the bag. Um. Oh, this is dope. I know this dude. Zeph McNamara, I'm going to need your help, though. Uh, IG uh, cuts off the questions. So Zeph has said, uh, long-time listener, first-time Insta questioner, have you read the incredible opinion on qualified immunity that came out? Something, something, something. And so I uh, I say, no, Zeph, I haven't. But I, I uh, Zeph is a, is a good, good person. And so I'm going to try... Something very risky, qualified immunity. I'm just going to throw it into the unbranded internet search box and uh, see if I can find out what you're talking about. One day ago, 17 hours ago, one day ago. Okay. A judge's blistering opinion shows why it must go. Washington Post, which I support. Hometown newspaper for life. And I will pay for good journalism. But they got a weird ad that's covering up. Okay. So let's just share this uh, in real time. U.S. District Court Judge Carlton Reeves couldn't do justice for the plaintiff in his court who had sued over police abuse. The Supreme Court won't let him. So Reeves issued an opinion that dutifully followed the law and blistered the justices for the all but insurmountable barrier they have constructed to shield police officers from being held to account. Reeves, a Barack Obama nominee who sits in Jackson, Mississippi, and is the second black federal judge in the history of the state, 
produced one of the most powerful pieces of legal writing I have ever encountered. His opinion is a 72-page creed de coeur. Look at, folks, he's dropping French up in the Washington Post. 72-page creed de coeur directed at the Supreme Court, arguing that it must do away with the doctrine of qualified immunity for law enforcement officials. Reeves begins with the larger context. Clarence Jamison wasn't jaywalking. Footnote, that was Michael Brown, shot by police in Ferguson, Missouri. He wasn't outside playing with a toy gun. Footnote, that was 12-year-old Tamir Rice, shot in park by a Cleveland police officer. He wasn't suspected of selling loose, untaxed cigarettes. Footnote, that was Eric Garner, the Staten Island man who died after an officer put him in a chokehold. And on and on for 19 excruciating footnotes. And lawyers in this world, yo, they be using footnotes like little daggers. You know, they drop mad dimes in the footnotes. And on and on for 19 excruciating footnotes, George Floyd and Philando Castile, Sandra Bland, Breonna Taylor, until we get to Jameson's non-offense. He didn't make an improper lane change. He didn't have a broken tail light. He wasn't driving over the speed limit. He wasn't driving under the speed limit. No. Clarence Jameson was a black man driving a Mercedes convertible. In 2013, in Pelahatchie, Mississippi, an hour south of Philadelphia, Mississippi, where Andrew Goodman, Michael Schwerner, and James Cheney were killed in 1964. Because his temporary tag, he had just purchased the car, was allegedly folded over. Mm. As Reeves recounts, Jameson's fate was less dire than that of many others. As he made his way home to South Carolina from ovation in Arizona, Jameson was pulled over and subjected to 110 minutes of an armed officer badgering him, pressuring him, lying to him, and then searching his car top to bottom for drugs. Nothing was found. Jameson isn't a drug courier. He's a welder. Jameson wasn't shot, he wasn't killed, but he was frightened and humiliated and his car suffered several thousand dollars in damage to a seat and convertible top. And as Reeves found, his constitutional rights were violated. Officer Nick McClendon's search of Jameson's car violated the Fourth Amendment and Jameson's supposed consent to the search could hardly be deemed voluntary. This is, I should do more reading Washington Post articles with gusto. I'm getting all fired up. So, uh... Thank you, Zeph, for bringing this to my attention, to bringing this to all of our attention. And good Judge Reeves trying to defend us all. Qualified immunity is this doctrine which allows cops to get away with murder because cops have gotten away with murder. It is this circular logic which says, well, you can't punish people because they haven't been punished before. That's a, a simplification, but that's essentially how it goes. And Zeph, you are actually a lawyer, so you please correct me in the footnotes of IG if you think I am erring from the facts in any significant way. And so there are many things that shield police officers from accountability for their actions. There are police unions. There's the blue wall of silence, that thin blue line. There is a lack of prosecutors' willingness to go after them because they need to cooperate with them to get their prosecutions. There is bad training. There is everything. But qualified immunity is one of those things that sits high atop the list from a judicial perspective which prevents folks from being held accountable. And apparently, Brother Judge Reeves wasn't having any of it. And so he excoriates the Supreme Court for their upholding of this circular, non-accountable thing. So, um, I want to link this. I want to I wanna link this. Because I was... I was I was watching some cable news earlier this week. Sometimes I drift from self-care and I engage in self-harm, which is watching cable news. And I was listening to people talk about this president and his relationship with the Deutsche Bank. Huh? Yes, the Deutsche Bank. The, play, the bank that gives him two billions of dollars and asks no questions a very... Credible financial institution willing to do dirt with a dirty man. So, the Deutsche Bank gives the money to the criminal, to the philanderer, to the man who cannot maintain his marriage or his relationship with his children or his relationship with his bank accounts. And they say, go take our money, do the crime things you want to do. We are not even the real bank, you know. We just want to have a leg up in Wall Street. We're not a real Wall Street bank. So, we give the money to the philanderer, to the criminal, to make ourselves seem relevant in the country. Uh... And there's people trying to get access to this dude's records. There's the Cy Vance and Manhattan District Attorneys. There's the SDNY the, out of the Justice Department, the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Southern District of New York. And there was a whole Robert Mueller 
situation. You remember Robert Mueller? You remember he had a whole squad? Remember people made t-shirts? <laughs> it's Mueller time. He had memes. I forgot all about that. I literally forgot Robert Mueller existed. That's how many years it's been. How many eons, decades it's been since a year ago. And on this cable news program, which was causing me no small amount of self-harm to indulge and ingest, someone who was a part of this team or explaining this team's work said, well, how come Mueller's team didn't look at all these crimes with the Deutsche Bank situation and the fraud and the insurance fraud and the tax fraud and the mad crimes, yo, mad crimes. How come they didn't look at that? And the answer and reply, now I'm remembering the details. It was a New York Times reporter who's covered a lot of this author of Dark Tower and someone else I don't remember what she's penned. But they were explaining that Mueller time had a, a limited remit. That pursuing, investigating such potential crimes was not in their remit. They didn't have approval to go beyond what they were there to look for. We need some remits on these sheriffs pulling people over in Mississippi. We need some remits for the cops in Staten Island. We need, I wanna be able to be like, yo, 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 do that Robert Mueller thing and don't start asking questions about shit. You're, you pull me over for a busted taillight? You don't get to go through my whole vehicle. It's not in your remit. Give me that, I want that POTUS treatment. Because it's not in the remit. How do we get that for everyday Americans? That's what I want. That's what I, I just want to be subjected to the same rule of law or lack thereof that my fellow citizen, the president of the United States, is subjected to or not. So, you know, if he gets to do all the dirt, inflate his assets to get a loan fraudulently, deflate them to evade taxes Ill, un unlawfully, and they can't look at it, because it's not in the remit, <laughs> then that's my new refrain, son. I am law abiding as far as you're concerned. Any other such behavior, not in the remit. See the president. That's my footnote. My footnote is the president of the United States. What? And I got the Supreme Court to back me. And then once you don't prosecute me for this, I'm gonna cite qualified immunity. Because I got away with it once, I can get away with it a thousand times. I just want the same standard for everybody, that's all. Either everybody gets held accountable, everybody gets prosecuted, everybody goes to jail, or nobody does. But we can't be having this discriminatory, unequal enforcement of the law. Because that's not America. Hello. All right. Uh, let's see. What else we got in the bag? Thank you, Zeph, for that. Appreciate you. Hmm. Someone has asked me a question that I want to answer, but I can't because I don't have the book in me, with me right now. Your favorite book as of recent that highlights Black Joy. I want to throw this to y'all. Uh, can you try to light up the chat with any books that you think um, highlight Black Joy. I think it'd be great to see that list. I am reading a book right now and I'm gonna do my best to find it. It is, it is not in this bunker. It is in a different part of the home and I'm not gonna leave you like that just to go get the book, but I'm gonna see if I can do some unbranded searching on the internet box uh, book, title, award, <laughs> uh, let's see if I can, yes, okay, I think I found the author, and let's go for, the book is, oh, I love you, Unbranded Search Engine, I love you so much, Children, of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. I've been sitting on this book for a long time. I've been 
carrying it. I lugged it all the way from New York to Los Angeles. Um, and I finally started reading it because I was tired of reading nonfiction doomsday narratives of everything that's going on in the world right now. And I am, I'm loving this book. I have actually trimmed back on my video binging to just sit and read this book. Um, it's, it's really, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful book. So Children of Blood and Bone, uh, to Tomi or Tommy Adeyemi, check that out. There is a lot of joy in this book and a sense of purpose and mission. And it's uh, with the Yoruba language, which is the one that my name uh, emerged from. So that's, that's my no uh, nomination recommendation. I'd love to see uh, what else y'all have in the chat. The Wedding by uh, Dorothy West, Becoming by Michelle Obama. That's good. Phenomenal Woman by Maya Angelou. Thank you for that. Uh, Mosquito by, oh, you're leaving me hanging, by Gall Jones, Vicky Velcro. Thank you for that recommendation and nomination. That's a really, that's a fun question. Uh, let's see, let's see. Looking for else. So, uh, N-Y-L-A-J. Hi, I followed you because I was on the Jack and Jill call. Do you have any advice for young people wanting to make a difference past protesting? And then IG cuts you off, but I think I get your drift. Advice for young people wanting to make a difference past protesting. Nyla J, N-Y-L-A-J. Uh, chat people, light it up. Offer your own take on this question. There's so many tools we have to make change. Um, and I think one of the most profound does not involve leaving your house, does not even necessarily involve interacting with another human. It involves internal work. It involves a relationship with yourself. Asking yourself a series of questions, understanding where you are from, understanding what moves you, what motivates you, understanding where you feel you have power, where you feel you have competency, and where you have joy. And you want to try to line those things up so that you are coming at this struggle from the strongest position so that you're like, okay, I know how to make beats or string words together or line up these numbers or design these websites or speak to other people, whatever your thing is. And how do you channel that in service of what you want to see in the world? Not everybody has to be out in the streets protesting. It is not the only way to literally have your voice be heard. Um, it could be something else. It could be that you are a really great chef, really great cook, really great creator of meals. And so you can use that. Look at, look at our man, Jose Andres. Look at Royal Central Kitchen. This dude is a renowned chef. He can make a mean meal. And he has turned that ability to catalyze food creation and tap the best of other people and their ability to do the same to help relieve people from disasters all across the world in Haiti and Puerto Rico in the United States. He's using the skills and his passion and his joy to help others and to make a big difference because in the work that he does, he reminds people of the power they have to feed themselves and to feed their community and not rely on FEMA trucks to show up three weeks, three months late. That's he's such a powerful example. And you don't see Jose Andres out in the streets Protesting necessarily, that's, that's not his calling. That's not his core competency, you know, to borrow some language from the business world. So I say start inside. I say start by asking what you care about, what you love, what you think you're good at, knowing where you're from. And then I'd say, you know, the way you execute that, the way you work that out in the world should come down to what's available to you at the time, what you enjoy doing, what you think you're good at. And that is far beyond protesting because we need people who protest. We also need people who write. We need people who math. We need people who science. We're in a global pandemic. We need people who science. I mean, right now I could do with somebody who could figure out testing, you know, tracing, supported isolation. We could use some mathematicians right about now to take a look at where we are on the curve. We could use some people with good communication skills to explain to folks while wearing a mask is not an infringement on your civil liberties, but rather a way for you to contribute to your society. There are so many things that could have been asked of us. And 
we've been asked the bare minimum, stay home, mask up, stay six feet away from other people. So if you got skills of communication to help out on that very important mission, that is probably more valuable than you putting your body in the street. Let somebody else do that who's great at that and feels like that's their only way. Thank you, Nyla J, for that question. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, Jack and Jill. Kids of the future. That's right. And we're going to be with you as you help correct some of the mistakes we have made for the world that you're inheriting. Sorry about that. Sorry about the whole climate. Ugh. Kind of dropped the bag on that one. So, and I see these other comments. Let me uh, uh, pay homage to some of that. Jessica Carlson says, share your voice in person dialogue or via social media. Journal about what your feelings are. That's a great recommendation. Uh, Satheba says, I grow a garden and share with no strings. That's a gift. It's the gift of giving. And that can help change. Read, educate yourself, says Courtney Park, and then figure out how to impact your circle. If you impact your family and friends, they will then impact their people. And it continues. And that, that is a very important point. There's a lot of us who get really excited about going off yonder over there and changing somebody who seems so obviously wrong and we abandon the people we are friends with, the people we work with, the people we are educated with, the people we live with and love. And they're right there. And they are primed to listen to us. So I am speaking to you if you have abandoned your Midwestern family for the coasts. Talk to your cousin. You know what I'm saying? Talk to your mama about this election, about these choices we have. Because they might listen to you a little bit more than they listen to this ranting Negro on IG right now. Use those powers. Thank you. Uh, Sateba says, learn facts and educate yourself. Read. Um, Teodora says, digital engagement with one or more of your favorite political candidates. There's a lot of digital. In fact, we are in a digital world. We're living in the matrix right now. So you can join campaigns to text message on behalf of candidates at, at the state and local level. I would highly recommend you check out a group called Open Progress, which will train you up in how to use these tools that we used to be required people to go door to door, but now we go cell phone to cell phone through text messaging. And I've done many campaigns with Open Progress. So I speak from experience when I say it is gratifying, it is satisfying, and it's humbling to be in communication and have somebody let you into their, into their pocket, into their purse. Uh, so yeah, great question. Thank you for that. Thanks for everyone who weighed in for our future on how else to show up besides physically in protest. Look at this. We had two minutes left already. Wow. All right. So... Um, in conclusion, let's change the Senate, let's change the president, let's change our communities, let's change ourselves. This is live on lockdown episode 35. I do this most Thursdays. Sometimes I have to take off a Thursday because I've got a lot of the stuff going on. If you like the sound of this voice and the things I've been saying, check out my podcast. We're having a moment wherever you get podcasts and brace yourself for how to citizen with Baratunde. You can find me on text, 202-894-8844. Shoot me one of those and check out my website, beveratunday.com, where I uh, let you sign up for my emails and share other things going on. This has been fun. The time has flown. I want to thank uh, the people who make brown liquids. I want to thank Axios and HBO for reminding us that we are living under a would-be mad king. But we have an opportunity to overthrow our government peacefully coming up in a few months. Take advantage of that. Check your registration, check that of your neighbors and encourage your friends and family to do the same and request those uh, absentee ballots very early. Very, very early. More to come. More to come. Peace and love, y'all. I lost the, the button. Did they move the... There it is. I know how to operate the technology from the future, remember? <laughs>